everyone, I'm Steve here with Brian Sanchez. Brian is at our studio in uh, Carson City at the Fitness for 10 location. Thanks for being with us, Brian. Thank you, Steve. It's always a joy to talk with you. I knew you were going to say something like that. Hey, that's where we roll, bro. Yeah. All right. So, you know, some, some people don't know that sometimes, and people give up too early sometimes with their weight loss program. Oh, yeah. yeah. You have a lot of experience. And sometimes someone's going maybe a week or two weeks or three weeks, and they're not seeing anything. And then all of a sudden they get results, right? Correct. So just give us an idea of some of the things that you've seen and why people need, sometimes they need to be patient. Okay. Weight loss patience. Real simple. If it took you 10, 20, 30 years to gain the weight you don't want, listen, everybody, why do you think in eight weeks you can lose it all? I'm not trying to be cruel. I'm just saying you have to be patient with the process. You have to be patient with your program and you need to make sure the way you're training is designed for that. Uh, the reason I say that there's a lot of variables into weight loss, you know, and yeah, we can, we can go on to, onto the television and, and see things. We can go onto YouTube and see things. You can go to the, to the, um, off-label prescription uh, groups and see this person lost 70 pounds, this person lost 80 pounds on this product. And you're out there getting mad because you only lost two inches around your body measurements or you only lost 10 pounds in the last three months. Look, that is success when you're just going down a couple inches because there's too many variables. If you walk in and you decide, okay, I'm going to go into a weight loss program. First thing you got to start asking yourself is, how am I eating? If your food isn't dialed in for your body and your exertion and your fitness uh, 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 and your lifestyle, if it's not dialed in to match that, then you're going to have a tough go. If you're unwilling to make changes to your lifestyle outside of the fitness centers, then you're going to have a tough go. The workouts supplement a weight loss program, but so does your food, so do your sweets, so do your beers and wine. All those other things play into it. You need to know when you're doing weight loss programs what your body fat percentage is. More importantly, you should have a really good idea if it's not measured, work with your coaches and trainers, your lean muscle mass. It's crazy important when you're trying to work on a weight loss program, you need to know your water levels, your fluid levels in your body, what your actual uh, water measurement is in your body. The reason I say things like that is you can be in a weight loss program and only drop, let's say five pounds and you've been training hard for five months. Now, is that good or is that bad? I'm going to tell you it's fantastic, first off, if you've lost five pounds over a couple months because there's a real good chance you're going to keep it off because it's not an immediate drop. But is that weight loss water or is it fat? How do we know this? Is it stymied? In other words, did you really lose 12 pounds but increased your water intake so you're healthier, so your body's water weight is up by three pounds. And did you put on lean muscle mass, four or five pounds of lean muscle mass? Maybe not that much, but let's just say that. So really you've adjusted eight pounds in that direction and you're five pounds. So maybe you're truly at 11, 12 pounds lost. You just don't know. Scale's going to lie to you. It really is. And you really have to be careful with this. And what happens is when people are doing this. Let me just. Let me just say something right there, Brian, with the example that you gave. Did you just start taking creatine? You're going to be holding more energy and, and, and more water in the muscle cells. That's a good thing. It's going to make you heavier, but it's not going to make you bigger, really. It'll make your muscles bigger, but are they really? So that kind of goes to the water weight and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to measure it. It's really huge to understand this, especially when you're going into like a recomposition of the body. A lot of people, when they're working out and they're in their first couple of months of exercise, um, their whole body's recompetent. Their pants are starting to fall off and they, they, you know, their shirts are getting loose, you know, their brassieres, their underwear, everything's changing. 
and, you know, for men and women. And, and they, they'll get frustrated. They're like, all this stuff doesn't fit. And I had to buy all these new things, but I only lost three pounds. Well, if all we're gauging it on is what the scale says, you're completely missing everything. You should already know that because your clothes are looser, because your body looks different, because your friend just said, why are you? your face is looking thinner? You're truly losing fat, but you might be adding some other things. And the, 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 the style of workout too really has to be important to you. How many calories are you truly going to burn in that day? Um, one of the things that's really important when we look at this and you're comparing yourself to the YouTube commercials, the Ozempic commercials, the, the ads in the magazines, and you see these things where they have people talking about, I lost 70 pounds in 36 months. Well, if somebody is 150 pounds overweight and they lose 70 pounds, is that good? Yes. If somebody is 10 pounds overweight and they lose three, is that good? Yes. Their bodies aren't going to burn the fat away like the person that's 150 pounds heavier. You're not going to uh, um, actualize that significant, huge weight loss because you're not 200 pounds overweight. So you have to be very careful in assessing your weight loss program. You have to make sure that you're not defeated when you're looking at this thing. A couple of keys you got to do. You got to start taking your body measurements. You need to know what your neck is, your chest line, your belly button line, your hip line, your quads, um, your, your uh, calves, your arms. You want to know what those measurements are. You want to know what your body fat percentage is. BMI is a tough one because you can play with it a little bit and it can throw you off depending on what your muscle mass is compared to your height. But you do want to know what it is. You want to know all these numbers. Drink more water. You don't care if you're heavier because you do. Your true fight is body fat loss, body fat percentage. Find it, identify it, and use that as your guide. Then if your weight's going up, Let's just say you lose 4% body fat, but you gained three pounds. Did you win? Yes, you did. Why? Because you started taking creatine, so your water's heavier. You uh, worked out really hard for three months, so your, your lean muscle mass went up, but you dropped all that body fat. That is huge. You can truly weigh more, but have lost fat. Does that make sense, Steve? Of course, you're changing your body composition. And as a matter of fact, I don't know if you know this, but we're really looking at a, a body scanner. Oh, nice. Which is really cool because now you're looking at the fat. Now you know this much fat is gone. This much fat is increased. You can really track your progress because you're seeing the, the scale is not going to tell it all. But this scanner will because it will it will show you. Oh, you know, I've got some visceral fat or, uh, you know, this, this much subcutaneous fat and I see it getting smaller. So that's going to be something that's really encouraging, uh, for people, um, when they're tracking their progress. One thing you gotta be realize everybody, we are so ultra critical of ourselves. When you look in the mirror and don't like what you see, not everybody else sees it that way. You're not as heavy as you think you are. You just may not like stuff. Start to love yourself for who you are. First off, accept yourself for who you are, and then go make positive changes. One pound difference is a positive change. Increased weight with a decrease in body fat is an excellent change for a person's body. Dropping inches on the body and maintaining your weight is an excellent success for a person in a weight loss program. And if that makes sense, I guess maybe I should say it. If your body is going down in inches, but your weight is plateaued, what do you think is the real issue going on? It's not you're not losing weight. It's that you're putting on positive weight in muscle growth. You're putting on positive weight in increasing your water intake. Embrace it for what it truly is. And make sure you have these discussions with your coaches. They will walk through all of this with you, especially the coaches that are measuring this for you. And like uh, Steve's saying, these, the, the facilities, a lot of the facilities will even give you printouts um, that show your body fat, your water weight, your lean muscle weight, things of this nature. If you don't know where to go get a body scan, 
a lot of the age management clinics have these, and I've used them at these places where you go in and you scan your body. It's almost like going through an MRI, if you will, where they scan your whole body and give you your bone density, your body fat, your lean muscle weight, all of this stuff, the visceral fat. You know how much you have when you go through these scans. Steve's 100% right on this. Don't give up, everybody. Be nice to yourself and look at the positive things that are changing for you. Don't quit because you've only lost a few pounds. Right. Totally agree with that. And, you know, that positive, that positive makes me feel really good. Um, I wouldn't, what are you laughing at? I, you know, it's, I, I wouldn't take it so far as to where you might want to be a fat influencer that you love yourself so much that, you know, you're going to turn into a, ooh, you're laughing 500 pounds or something. And I mean, you don't mean that, right? You're talking morbidly obese. No, stay away from it. What I'm saying is it's okay to not have the picture perfect body that you see in a magazine or in a movie. <laughs> yeah, that's not very, that's not realistic, especially no. people don't realize these people that do these photo shoots, uh, these models, they, these bodybuilders, they're actually that way for a day or two. And they're, that's a day or two that they're not healthy. So that shouldn't be your goal. Something that's, that you can maintain and live with that's healthy. That's what you want. Right. I mean, the, the, the clients that we've had uh, that uh, 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 perform on stage in competition, those last couple of months when they're, they're weeding everything out of their body, the fluids, the fat, everything else, and their skin is paper thin by the time they go to that show, look at them three weeks later. They look normal again. They're eating again. They're doing all these different things to where their body is back to its normal look. That is not normal. So, you know, hang on to it, guys. Be good to your program. Keep it with you and don't throw it away. Yeah, and you know, the last thing I'll say is it, what's kind of exciting is you can go through this process that Brian's talking about, and then all of a sudden, it might be three months, it might be six months, it might be eight months, and then boom, all of a sudden, you start to lose a lot of weight. It's because your body is letting go of it. You've put, a, you've put on a lot of lean tissue and your body's going, I don't need this or want this body fat. And at any point, it can start to really come off faster than you think and even faster than normal. Exactly. Keep moving forward, everybody. That's why you got to be patient. Brian, thanks for being with us. Uh, appreciate your input. Good to see you, everybody. See you next time, Steve.